So good afternoon students, uh, today we will understand about the second method. Uh, so this is another method which can be used to find the root of a equation. So this second method, second basically nothing but this second uh, means the cut or this is uh, we can say this is related with the uh, that, that chord that cuts at x axis. So we will see it later. So this video basically covers the basic principle of the second method and we will see one example in which we will uh, find the root using this second method. So let us see, so first of all we will see its uh, principle and then uh, we will see how we can find the approximation uh, to find the desired root. Let us see. So we can say the second method, this is the this is an improvement over the method of false position that we have seen in previous video because it does not require the condition as we can see in that method we were also seeing a property that was fx0 into fx1 is less than 0. So this condition is not required in this second method so we can say and this is the improvement over the regular falsi method or method of false position. It does not require a condition. Now the graph of the function that y equals to fx uh, it is approximated by a second line. So we can take uh, the reference for that graph that we have uh, drawn in the previous lecture of method of false position to graph for the second line and the method of false position both are same. So we can reference to that graph. So the graph of the function that is y equals to fx this is approximated by a secant line, secant line means that is the, that is the chord. Now it is not necessary in this uh, here we have to see that it is not necessary the interval that we will take in the starting. Uh, we will take uh, two initial values, two initial limits. So it is not necessary that interval will contain the root for each iteration. So it is not necessary with the, that for a particular iteration the value or the root will lie within that interval. It may lie outside the interval also. So this is all this is very important point. Now equation of the chord for two initial limits let us say two initial limits are like x0 and x1. So for this the equation will be this is y minus fx1 equals to fx1 minus fx0 x1 minus x0 into x minus x1. So this is the equation. Now as per this equation now we, we can see abscissa of that is x coordinate abscissa means uh, this is x coordinate of the point where it crosses the x axis. So it will be at x axis where this second or this chord will cut y will be 0. So as soon as we put y goes to 0 here so this will be this will be minus fx1 equals to fx1 minus fx0 divided by x1 minus x0 into x minus x1 on simplification this uh, this will be this will be equal to x equals to x1 minus x1 minus x1 minus x0 divided by fx1 minus fx0 into fx1. So we can simplify it after putting this y goes to 0 so this is simple mathematics. So after finding the value of x from here now we can say because uh, the chord that cut the x axis at x2. So we can say so this abscissa will be x2 equals to x1 minus x1 minus x0 divided by fx1 minus fx0 into fx1. So this is the approximation that is x2 because we are putting this value 
and we are getting this from here this is x equals to x1 minus x1 minus x0 divided by fx1 minus fx0 into fx1 because we want to find out the value of x2 therefore we can say this is x2 equals to x1 minus x1 minus x0 fx1 minus fx0 into fx1 now in the same way we can calculate the value of x3 so we can calculate the value of x3 so x3 will be this will be x2 here we can say this will be x2 minus x2 minus x1 divided by fx2 minus fx1 into fx2 so in this way we can proceed and further we can find out the value of x4 x5 and so on so it can be generalized one one but one thing we have to remember here that at each iteration at each step the value of x0 and x1 are changed like here this value will be here x0 will be x1 and x2 will be sorry x0 will be x1 and x1 will be x2 so it can be generalized like we can calculate here we have calculated x2 then the next approximation will be x3 and then the next approximation will be x4 and so on so it can be can be generalized so generalized form is it can be given as xn plus 1 equals to xn minus xn minus xn minus 1 divided by fxn minus fxn minus 1 into fxn where n is greater than equals to 1 so this is the equation to find the approximation of the root so now one thing it is to be noted here that it is to be noted here that this second method not always converts so we can say it is not necessary it is not necessary that second method always converge but regular falsi method always converges regular falsi always converse so this is the difference or this is this point we should note here that not always converge and the second point that we can note if it converts if we are using this second method and if it it converts then we can say the conversion or the rate of converge will be rate will be better if it if it converge if it converge then rate is will be faster than regular falsi so these are the two points that we should remember normally it not always converse but if converge 
then the rate is faster than regular falsi method to find the root so this is the basic uh, concept now we will see we will uh, see the example uh, based on this second method now let us see so now we will see the example and in this example we have to find the root of the equation uh, this is x e to the power x equals to cos x using the second method here we have to use this second method and the equation is x e to the power x equals to cos x now we will see the solution so let fx is equals to cos x minus x e to the power x so it can be rewritten we can rewrite it so this can be x cos x minus x to x into e to the power x equals to 0 so in this way we can write it and initial approximations are x0 is 0 and x1 is 1 since at these two values we are saying that these are the two initial limits from where we will start the value of x0 is 0 and the value of x1 is 1 so we will find fx0 so we can put this x0 equals to 0 here so it will be x0 minus 0 into e to the power 0 equals to 1 this will be a positive value and similarly we can find out fx1 for this the value is 1 we will put 1 here so this will be cos 1 minus 1 into e to the power 1 after putting this value and simplifying it comes out to be minus 2.17798 this is negative that is why we are saying these are the initial limits our approximation that we want to find out where that will lie at uh, the th this will be the uh, second this will be the code that will cut x axis where the y will be 0 now by second method now we will apply the second method here for limits x0 and this x0 is this is 0 and x1 this is 1 for these two values we can use the formula and this is x2 equals to x1 minus x1 minus x0 fx1 minus fx0 into fx1 so straight forward we will put all these values we are knowing x1 now x1 is 1 x0 is this is 0 fx1 is fx1 is minus 2.17798 and fx0 is this is 1 so putting all these values this will be 1 plus 1 upon 3.17798 into minus 2.17798 it comes out to be 0.31467 so the value of x2 is 0.31467 now for this particular value now we will find the value of fx2 so fx2 will be we will put this value x2 here in this equation let us say this is equation number 1 in 1 we will put so this will be cos 0 0.31467 minus 0 0.31467 into e to the power 0 0.31467 as per the equation number 1 so simply we are putting the, the value of x2 here and we can calculate the value so it comes out to be the x2 will be this is 0 0.51 987 now because this was the one approximation we can say this is approximation and the next approximation this is we can say this is x3 this x3 will be this is x2 minus x2 minus x1 now the value of x0 and x1 are changed here it is to be uh, we have to note here in this formula the values were this x1 minus x0 but now when we will find this x3 so this will be x2 this will be x2 and this will be x1 that we can see from here x3 goes to x2 minus x2 minus x1 x2 minus fx1 into 
f x 2. Now, after putting all these values of x 2, x 1, f x 2, f x 1, then it gives 0.44673. So, this is the another approximation or we can say the next approximation. After this again we will find, we will put this value and we will find f x 3. So, f x 3 comes out to be again we will put this value of x 3 here in this equation 1. So, it can be written as cos 0 0.44673 minus 0 0.44673 into e to the power into e to the power 0.44673 and it comes out to be 0.20354. Now, we can find the other approximations like we can find the x 4 the value of x 4. So, it will be now x 3 minus x 3 minus x 2 upon f x 3 minus f x 2 into f x 3 equals to 0 0.53171. After putting all these values that is values of value of x 3, value of x 2, value of x f x 3, value of f x 2 it gives the value of x 4 is this is 0 0.53171. So, this is the next approximation. Now, repeating this process we will repeat this process until we get the final root. So, repeating this process the successive approximations will be or are the next will be this will that will be x 5. So, like this x 4 we can find out the value of x 5. So, for uh, this x 5 the equation will be x 4 minus x 4 minus x 3 and so on. So, we can put all these value and we can find out the value of x 5. So, it comes out to be 0 0.51690 and the value of x 6 is 0 0.51775 and the value of x 7 is 0 0.51776. So, now here we can say the final root, the final root is this is because from here we can see up to 4 decimal places up to 4. decimal places equals to it comes out to be 0 0.5177 0 0.5177. So, this is the answer. So, this is the value of the root because if we find out the value of x 8 this will be same or we can say this value is repeating. So, this is the answer. So, I hope that you would be benefited from this video. Thank you.